conversation with Ahmed Mazari, Microsoft's president for Asia. Thank you very much, uh, Ahmed, for talking to Money Control. Um, you know, I want to start by asking you about um, what you're picking up from people at Davos companies uh, in terms of technology spends this year. How is it trending? Chandra, yeah. thank you for having me and, and great pleasure to be here. Um, I've probably met uh, 32 different customers uh, over the last four days and it's very energizing. The last meeting with one of the CEOs of a very large energy company, he summed it up as saying he's only seeing two words across, which is yeah. A&I. <laughs> uh, we see uh, increasing uh, attraction. Uh, we see proofs of concept. Uh, we see real uh, production uh, cases of AI. Um, so it's, it's one of the highest diffusion technologies that we have seen um, mm. uh, across the last several decades of technology innovation. Right. Uh, Microsoft, of course, had an early lead because of its partnership with OpenAI. So tell us about how you're planning to leverage that, particularly in, uh, in a market like Asia. What are you offering enterprises? That's a great question. Uh, you know, our, our partnership with uh, uh, OpenAI is very deep, but Microsoft itself uh, continues to develop on the AI front. Um, the most innovative uh, SLM, or the small lang language model, is Phi. Um, which um, is, is very powerful, uh, driven by very deep cognitive uh, development, uh, which we are seeing uh, uh, in the open space uh, take a lot of traction. But equally, your question on the enterprise is, is a very interesting one. There are banks that are experimenting with contact center uh, automation. Uh, there's energy companies that are looking at uh, preventive maintenance. Um, there's retail companies that are doing product cataloging and marketing. Um, there is a company um, uh, in, in India that you point out, Mintra, uh, that is actually using your AI for product cataloging and customer-consumer interface. Um, Indigo uh, and Air India, both, which probably capture most of the market in India, use the consumer bar. So uh, in Indu Indigo's case, uh, I uh, started to use it because I was trying to see how it works. And it's pretty fascinating how, uh, interestingly, they have integrated their consumer experience with a ticketing experience with uh, with travel. Right. I also wanted to understand, Emma, you know, Microsoft has been uh, sort of increasing its cloud ambitions in Asia. So what are your top strategic priorities, the growth opportunities that you see across? Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty broad, I think, uh, Chandra, but maybe perhaps to narrow it down. I mean, at the core, our vision is to empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. Um, the rate of diffusion, like I described in this case, has been much faster than anyone would have anticipated. So in the areas of enablement, I mean, I'll talk about three or four different areas, perhaps that might bring it to life. Um, so let's look at um, uh, healthcare uh, and AI. Uh, there's a company in, in Vietnam, uh, as we look at the broader Asian picture, that's doing cancer diagnostics, right? It's called VinBrain. And what essentially they're doing is they, they have, they have uh, millions of pictures and they're using doctors to do prompt engineering to ensure the accuracy of the outcome from, from their own uh, model that they are creating. Um, if I go um, uh, and expand into the larger startups, right, uh, there's uh, Darwin Box, uh, which is a SaaS company mm -hmm. where AI has been embedded by, by Microsoft. And then I already gave you certain examples of the large scale uh, businesses like Mintra. Then we think about the social sector. I think in the social sector, the impact is really powerful. I mean, you might have heard about uh, the app Jugalbandi, which has been a collaboration with the government of India. And the, the diffusion rate of that technology, like I explained, was within months of AI being available to the market, where a rural farmer is able to communicate on WhatsApp and engage on areas like subsidies or when to grow. We're actually working with just literally launched a small project in Baramati on farm vibes called Farms of the Future. And what is very fascinating is in a very controlled experiment, we're seeing the ability to drive much higher levels of, of productivity. Take a crop like tomato. Hmm. We believe that in a certain acreage, AI versus non-AI uh, farming, we could see between 30 to 50% increase in productivity of the plant. Right. Um, I also wanted to understand from you, I mean, you know, 
Where do you see India when it comes to your AI plans? I mean, we were listening to IBM CEO Arvind Krishna yesterday, um, and he spoke about how India is likely to be at the forefront of AI deployment, uh, how its digital public infrastructure also lends itself to, you know, skilling not just in big cities, but also in smaller cities because of uh, digital access and inclusion. So how does this play into your own strategy? Yeah, that's a fantastic question. Uh, I had the uh, ability to meet with many Indian ITAS CEOs, uh, in, including uh, people from NASCOM through this visit. Um, and the dialogue around it has been, hey, the Indian tech industry was really born around the Y2K moment, which was a period in time where something had to be done. Mm. And that laid the foundation for transformation in the tech stack. This seminal moment of AI creates this immense opportunity for tech companies in India to be the enablement engine of not only domestic companies in India, but think about what the work that has been done by the likes of Infosys or Cognizant or Wipro or TCS or even Tech Mahindra in our space. I believe, and we as a company are confident to back these companies, to train them, to skill them, to offer the IP so that they can help implement AI in customers in North America, in Europe, and different parts of the world. Right. Um, for 2024, tell us about Microsoft's plans for Asia in terms of hiring. Um, you know, overall, there is a sense of optimism among tech CEOs. But in recent weeks, we've also seen layoffs at some large tech firms um, in the US. But take us through your plans for Asia in terms of hiring investments and expansion. This yeah. That's a great question, Chandra. Look, uh, our business is to enable our consumers and our customers to have great success. So we're putting the right resources with our customers. Some of our customers are working with us, like I said earlier, on proofs of concept. Some of them are scaling them. So we're aligning our resources to match the opportunity. I would encourage uh, Indian CEOs and Indian industries to really grab this opportunity uh, because this opportunity is shaping at a pace that we have not seen in the past. And companies like Microsoft and others in the ecosystem are very eager to help enable and learn. Right. On that note, thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you, Chandra, for the fact.